I'm Olivia, a woman in my 70s. Ten years ago, my husband passed away suddenly from a stroke, leaving me devastated. During that difficult time, my son and his wife were focused on his life insurance payout. They seemed eager to get their hands on it, but the policy was in my name. I made it clear that I intended to use the money for myself, which led to a confrontation with my daughter-in-law. She insisted that I didn't need the money and that she should have it instead. Despite her demands, I stood my ground. Living together only added to the stress of our situation. While it's often assumed that daughters-in-law are the ones stressed by living with their in-laws, in my case, my daughter-in-law, Amelia, proved to be self-centered and disrespectful toward me. Amelia tends to take her frustrations out on me, and I've learned that she has a history of causing trouble. My son, on the other hand, seems reluctant to confront her behavior, leaving me feeling unsupported. The situation has strained our relationship, and I find myself walking on eggshells around her. As a mother, witnessing my son's behavior towards our household staff is truly heartbreaking. Despite the passage of time, the memories of these incidents remain vivid in my mind. My son and his wife, now in their mid-forties, seem to lack the empathy and respect I expected from them. One day, while I was out alone, I was struck by a motorcycle. The accident left me with severe injuries, including a fractured pelvis. The doctor informed me that walking independently would likely be a challenge due to my age. This news was devastating, and I found myself in need of constant care, relying on a cane or wheelchair for mobility. The realization that I could no longer move freely brought me to tears. I questioned why this was happening to me, and what I had done to deserve such a fate. Thankfully, we had a maid at home who could assist with household chores. However, even in my vulnerable state, my daughter-in-law, Amelia, displayed a disrespectful attitude towards our maid. Amelia would boss our maid around, demanding things like tea with a tone of impatience and superiority. Her words were often harsh and degrading, causing discomfort and resentment. Witnessing her behavior, I felt deeply ashamed and apologized to the housekeepers on her behalf. While they reassured me that everything was fine, I could sense their suppressed anger. Our maids worked tirelessly, not only taking care of the cleaning and cooking, but also handling grocery shopping. Despite their hard work, they were subjected to Amelia's disrespectful behavior. It pained me to see them treated this way, and I wished Amelia would show them the kindness and appreciation they deserved. In the face of my own challenges, I found solace in knowing that our maids were there to support me. Their dedication and hard work were a reminder of the importance of treating others with kindness and respect, regardless of their role or status. I hope that my son and daughter-in-law will learn from this experience and strive to be more compassionate and understanding towards others. The care and dedication of our maids extended beyond the household chores to include tending to our garden. As the sun beat down on us one particularly hot day, I suggested they take a break from weeding. However, Emma, one of our long-serving maids, insisted that the task was nearly complete. Emma, a seasoned veteran of the household, was around 60 years old and commanded the respect of her younger colleagues due to her considerate nature, strong work ethic, and responsible demeanor. Despite Emma's years of service and expertise, Amelia's attitude towards her was notably cold. She would often make snide remarks, questioning their conversations and urging them to work faster. Amelia's disrespectful behavior extended to derogatory comments about older people in general, which deeply saddened me. I found myself apologizing to Emma repeatedly for my daughter-in-law's behavior, knowing it was unjust and hurtful. Emma went above and beyond her duties, even assisting me with personal tasks like going to the bathroom, despite it not being part of her job description. Witnessing Emma's kindness and dedication, I contemplated hiring a home care helper to ease her burden. However, when I mentioned this to my son and his wife, Amelia vehemently opposed the idea. Amelia insisted that they didn't need a home care helper and suggested that the maid should handle such tasks. She made it clear that she had no intention of paying for additional help and accused me of being a freeloader when I offered to cover the cost myself. Her disrespectful behavior escalated, laughing with a cruel expression when I stood up to her. Faced with Amelia's callousness, I realized that I needed to assert myself. I refused to be belittled and mistreated, especially when it came to the well-being or dedicated staff. Emma deserved respect and appreciation for her hard work, and I was determined to ensure she received it, even if it meant standing up to my own family. Why do you always have to be against me? Your rudeness is uncalled for. Can't you at least listen to what I have to say? I pleaded with my daughter-in-law, hoping for some understanding. However, her response was harsh and hurtful. Who do you think you were to talk to me like that? Just shut up. If you're so unhappy, 
Why don't you move to a retirement home? It's about time you did. Can't you just leave us alone? Her words cut deep, questioning my sanity and suggesting that I use my pension to find a cheap retirement home. Feeling hurt and frustrated, I decided it was time to make a change. The following day, I had my relatives come and pick me up. While I couldn't move into a facility right away, I knew I couldn't stay with my son and daughter-in-law any longer. I felt like a burden, but I had no other options. Staying at a business hotel was out of the question due to my immobility. I needed help with even the simplest tasks. Thankfully, my relatives welcomed me with open arms and helped me settle in. They also assisted me in finding a suitable care facility. Despite being unfamiliar with phones, I managed to contact Emma, who stayed behind at home. With her help, I made arrangements for my move to the care facility. It was a relief to know that I would soon have a place where I could live comfortably. The facility turned out to be a pleasant surprise, offering a comfortable environment for my toilet years. However, my daughter-in-law's attitude continued to bother me. I received a message from her, questioning why all the maids were leaving and insinuating that I had said something to them. I reassured her that I had not said anything to the maids, but I did express to them that they did not need to continue serving me. It was clear that my daughter-in-law did not understand or appreciate the sacrifices the maids had made for our family. Despite everything, I was grateful to have found a place where I could live peacefully and comfortably. What did you just say, Amelia? You thought my son was the one paying the housekeepers, didn't you? It was actually me all along. I referred them to a friend who needed help urgently, and I'd been paying them out of my own pocket. How dare you? I confronted Amelia, frustrated by her assumption and mistreatment of the housekeepers. Amelia had always believed that my son was the one hiring and paying the housekeepers, which explained her disrespectful behavior towards them. Despite my attempts to clarify the situation, she would always interrupt me, refusing to listen. As if that wasn't enough, she had the audacity to ask about raising the housekeeper's hourly wage, dismissing me when I explained that it was my husband's decision. Her lack of respect and disregard for my involvement in the matter infuriated me. I had always planned on getting back at my son and his wife for their mistreatment, which was why I tolerated them for so long. Leaving my house was difficult, but I'd come to terms with it. In the past, society may have viewed it as pitiful for an elderly person to stay in a retirement home, but my perspective has changed. I believe that my decision to leave was the right one, and I have no regrets. Karma will catch up with my son and his wife one day, and I take solace in knowing that I stood up for myself and the housekeepers. Living in a retirement facility has its perks. I get to socialize with people my age, and there are activities that help keep my mind sharp and my body active. The food is delicious, and my room is always clean and comfortable. The facility itself is quite upscale, which is a testament to my financial planning over the years. I've always been open about my financial situation, and I made sure the facility was aware of it as well. However, a few months after moving in, I received a frantic call from my son. He was in a panic, telling me about a bug infestation in his house and asking for help. It turns out he didn't even know how to take out the trash, which left me feeling ashamed as a parent. After my husband passed away, I was heartbroken and unable to do much, which is why I hired housekeepers. My back was also starting to bother me, making it difficult to lift heavy objects. Until then, I had been managing all the household chores myself. Even after my daughter-in-law moved in, she didn't contribute to the housework, leaving everything to me. Since the housekeeper started coming, my son and his wife began to take their services for granted, expecting them to do everything. They would even call the housekeepers for minor tasks like washing a cup, which was frustrating to witness. I had tried to teach my son about responsibility from a young age, but he always resisted, believing that housework was his parents' duty. Reflecting on how I raised him, I feel a sense of failure. Despite my efforts, he grew up with a sense of entitlement, expecting others to take care of him. It's a painful realization, but I have come to accept that I did the best I could with the circumstances I was given. I've been making an effort in my own way, so I'm not solely to blame for this situation. I decided it was time to confront my grown son and give him a piece of my mind. I was fed up. No matter how many times I tried to teach him, he always refused to listen. This is why he's in such a mess. It's pathetic how he acts as though he's the one hiring the housekeepers when he's completely under his wife's control. He's so shallow, only concerned about impressing others. He's worried about what his wife will think of him if she finds out he's not the one providing for the housekeeping. All he cares about is maintaining his status, even though he's already under his wife's thumb. I always thought my son was pitiful, but I never imagined he was this pathetic. 
my feelings of love for him began to fade. As a mother, I might seem cold, but I'm only human. I've reached my limit with him. I ended the call and went to lunch. Today's meal looked delicious, and my appetite was hearty despite my age. It made me feel strong and capable. As I was returning to my room, my daughter-in-law unexpectedly appeared at the facility. She was furious, accusing me of living in luxury, while our house was a mess. She blamed me for the state of the house and demanded that I do something about it. Even though the housekeepers were technically my employees, I no longer felt responsible for their actions. My husband had passed away, so I could recommend them to others if I wanted to. Besides, why should I care? They were all adults and should be able to clean up after themselves without the need for housekeepers. Despite her intimidating glare, I no longer felt afraid of my daughter-in-law. Her anger and accusations didn't faze me anymore. I had reached a point where I was no longer willing to tolerate being blamed for things that were beyond my control. She appeared worn out, dirty, and to be honest, ugly. She's probably worn out from cleaning the house, which is something she never had to do before. Though I've never wanted to be a cruel mother-in-law, I find myself wondering about her upbringing. If any mother-in-law had a daughter-in-law like her, they most likely would feel the same way. My daughter-in-law's behavior continued to spiral out of control. She was causing a scene, and a security guard had to intervene and escort her out. However, in a fit of rage, she destroyed the flower outside the building. This act prompted the security guard to call the police, and she was arrested on the spot. As expected, she was held accountable for the damage she caused. While it wasn't a significant sum of money, being a housewife, she turned to my son for financial assistance. Despite being under her control, my son claimed he couldn't afford to cover her charges, leading to a heated argument between them. Things escalated to the point where the police were called to their home, and they received several complaints from neighbors about the state of their house, which had become a garbage dump. The situation at their home had deteriorated to the point where bugs were swarming, and it was unbearable. Eventually, a lawsuit was filed against them, resulting in the title and land of their house being transferred to my son. This was a prearranged arrangement I made just before moving into the facility. Consequently, my son was left with a bill of several hundred thousand dollars. It was a shocking turn of events, but I couldn't help but feel a sense of vindication. My daughter-in-law's behavior had finally caught up with her, and it seemed like karma had dealt her a harsh blow. Despite my initial feelings of anger towards her, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pity for the situation she had found herself in. As I reflected on everything that had transpired, I realized that sometimes actions have consequences. It was a harsh lesson for my son and daughter-in-law, but perhaps it was a necessary one. In the end, I hoped that they would learn from this experience and make better choices in the future. My son and daughter-in-law found themselves in a difficult situation and had to work hard to pay off the debt. Eventually, they came to me for help, stating that they had run out of savings and were on the brink of homelessness. Despite their pleas, I refused to assist them. I was firm in my decision, especially towards Amelia, who seemed insincere in her apology. Amelia's tear-streaked face and smudged makeup didn't sway me. Without saying a word, I left them and returned to my room. I decided to cut ties with my son and daughter-in-law, obtaining a restraining order against them and deleting their contact information. I wanted to live peacefully and didn't want to be bothered by them anymore. According to my relatives, my son and his wife resorted to begging for money, but they were shunned by everyone. No one was willing to lend them any money, and they ended up living in a small apartment. They had to work long hours to make ends meet, and I heard that they were struggling to keep up with their rent. Despite their hardships, I remained indifferent. It was no longer my concern, and I had no desire to get involved in their affairs. I was content with my peaceful life in the retirement home. Occasionally, Emma, who used to work for me, would visit and update me on her life. She seemed to be doing well and was grateful for the opportunity I had given her to work in a wealthy household. As I enjoyed my days in the retirement home, I reflected on my life and hoped to spend the rest of my days in a meaningful way. I had made peace with my decision regarding my son and daughter-in-law, and I was content with the peaceful life I had chosen for myself.